Here's a lovely review from Nina and Dad. We listen to this podcast every week with my six-year-old daughter, Nina. We even listen to the China Wall episode twice. Nina says, it's a very nice podcast. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. So, James, what do you think the best job in history is? What about a poo collector or a pirate or a toy maker? Which one of those would you rather be? Pirate. Why a pirate? Steering a boat sounds fun. Steering a boat sounds fun. Cool. So, did the Chinese have any other great jobs? We're going to find out more from a special writer called Lindsay Varty. Who do you know what? She used to go to Clearwater Bay School as well. Lindsay is the author of a book all about traditional Chinese jobs called Sunset Survivor. Welcome to Dad and Me, Lindsay. Thank you. (laughs) Nice to meet you guys. Lindsay went into Clearwater Bay School to introduce the children there to different trades from Chinese culture, some of which are still done in Hong Kong today. So it's basically just like uh, there's 30 different interviews with 30 people that run old jobs. So the ones that the Clover Bay kids looked at, I just picked out like five of these pages. So this is the toy maker, actually. Oh, yeah, let's let's go with it. In the 70s, Hong Kong was the largest producer of plastic toys in the world. But like these sort of toys, he still sells these today. But people don't really want to buy his toys anymore, he says, because kids nowadays want to play with iPads and iPhones rather than plastic toys. Is that right, James? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, James, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but I was a child in the 1970s. And when I was growing up in the UK, made in Hong Kong was everywhere on toys. That's that's what you'd expect. You, you would you would say, you go around a friend's house, and you see their new toy, and you say, oh, I bet it's made in Hong Kong. And usually it was. <laughs> so lots of stuff was made here. But now, not not so much at all. Now you'll see made in China. And that's the, the classic that you see all over the world now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as you're, you're right. We didn't have iPhones or anything when we were young. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so Lindsay, as well as being a wonderful author, is a professional rugby player here in Hong Kong and plays for Hong Kong International Rugby. So yeah, any more of the ones that the kids, you, you either did with the kids or kids m- might be interested in. Uh, with the, what else? Oh, this is an interesting one. So Hong Kong in the 60s, the literacy rate was only about 60%. So that means four out of ten people couldn't read or write. Exactly. So, James, do you read? Yes. Do you write? Yes. If you want to contact your grandma in England or wherever, how would you contact them? Facebook. Facebook or... Calling. Calling, email. Letters. Letters. Letters, okay. So before (laughs) any internet, good thinking, you had to write them a letter. You had to hand write a letter, right? But if you couldn't read or write, how would you do it? Uh, Go to him. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You'd have to find someone that could read or write and get them to write a letter for you. So you'd tell them what you wanted to say. They would write it down for you, send it. And then you'd go and pick it up in a few weeks' time. Because remember, it doesn't come back instantly. You have to wait weeks. And then they'd have to read you the letter as well. Maybe back in history, that's what our ancestors did, as we're called James and Paul Letters. That's right. Maybe that's what they did. They were letter writers for people. They were the, they were the person in the village who could write the letters. Maybe that's what you could be when you grow up, James. <laughs> <laughs> you love writing, don't you? No. <laughs> this is quite interesting and something that particularly like Westerners don't always know about. Um, so... In Chinese religion, uh, there's a belief that you can give offerings to people in the afterlife. So after somebody has passed away, you can give them like a present in what we would call heaven or an afterlife, right? Um, And uh, it can be anything. So in the past, people wanted maybe a nice house or a nice pair of shoes. And today, guess what people want in the afterlife? What would you want in the afterlife? Um, I don't know. When you want your iPad... (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's what people want. So, unfortunately, it's gone from these very nice things to all these materialistic um, things that people think they need in the afterlife, like iPhones, iPads, and so many iPhones, in fact, that they've got those mass-produced in China. 
um, by factory because there's just every single person wants an iPhone in the afterlife. Paper iPhones. Yeah. Um, and what you do is you burn them. And as when you burn them, it's an offering and that can be passed on to somebody in the afterlife. So nowadays, uh, there's all sorts of things that are made. And here is actually a paper recreation of a Nintendo. Oh, <laughs> paper Boy. Nintendo. So can you tell which one is real, which one is fake? Can you guess? Uh, yes. Which one do you think is the fake one? The paper one? Um, that one. Yes. <laughs> well done. I wasn't sure. You really all. can't tell, other than the sticker on it, because yeah. they haven't put the sticker on that yet. But when they put the sticker on later for me, it was exactly the same. You yeah. really, really couldn't tell. And it was really fascinating. And they put so much work into it. It can take weeks to make something like that. And each one costs about $2,000. So $2,000 to make this beautiful thing over several weeks just to burn it. Wow. <laughs> So you could get like a football, an iPad, whatever you want in the afterlife. <laughs> when I asked uh, Mr. Al Young what he wanted in the afterlife, he said that he wanted um, a few luxury cars. And they make them life size, so there's like <gasps> six or seven foot long <laughs> <laughs> cars, Mercedes Benz or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there wow. you go. That's what he said. When I die, I would like some cars, houses, and a hi fi system, of course. I want them handmade too. They are bigger, more grand, and beautiful. A super deluxe seven foot long Mercedes Benz and Porsche will do. <laughs> well, do you know how much that would cost? Uh, lots. Thousands thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Ah. There you go. Night soil collectors. They're your poo collectors. So, yeah, can you? what can you tell us about night soil? Well, you, the kids at Clear Off Bay were talking about it. So, back in the day, there were no toilets. So if there's no toilets, you're just given a bucket. So your whole family will use the same bucket. Sometimes you not even just one family, but multiple families will use the same bucket. And every night you put your bucket outside and some poor person has to come to collect it. And what used to happen in Hong Kong is these people would take it to a pier, put it on a junk boat. You ever been in a junk boat? Yeah. Yeah. And then take it out to an island and dump it all on a very smelly island and then come back so nobody would have to deal with it in the morning. Is that a nice job? No. <laughs> <laughs> we love, we love history, we love history, baby! We love, we love history! Villain hitters, that's an interesting one. Okay, Lindsay, what's a, <laughs> what's a villain hitter? Someone who goes around finding criminals and punching them. Well, that's a lot cooler than this might sound to you. <laughs> um, but it's sort of like a type of black magic. Um, they work under the Canal Road Bridge, the Canal Road flyover in Causeway Bay. You may have seen like, a little gaggle of old ladies there. Yeah. Uh, and what they do is say, James, you come to me, I'm a villain hitter, and you tell me that you really hate somebody at school. I'm not suggesting you do this. <laughs> I'm saying this is what has happened. Or you don't like someone. You come to me and you give me a picture of them or you just write their name down or their birthday on a bit of paper. And then the villain hitter, what they will do is they'll take an old shoe and they will like do a curse on that person and beat that little bit of paper that you gave <laughs> me with a shoe over and over again to put bad luck on them, wish bad luck upon them, and then they'll bless you to make sure that they give you lots of good luck and things for the <laughs> near future. This lady, Auntie Anne, said that majority of people that go there are um, angry wives who ha husbands have cheated on them or you know, people that don't like certain politicians or... The funny thing was, when I went there, I didn't really want to curse anyone. <laughs> I tried the service. I was like, I'm not really sure who to pick. I don't really hate anyone. And she's like, oh, don't worry. Most people just pick Donald Trump if they don't know. <laughs> so, James, do you think you, you might be tempted to um, go to a villain hitter to, for, for Donald Trump? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's nice. That's a good thing. You know? yeah. I don't wish that upon anyone. Yeah, we spoke about oh, no, pirates while well, the kids spoke about pirates. Oh, yeah, pirate sounds cool, but I didn't put anything about pirates in this book. Maybe <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Don't think I'd want to interview a pirate though, if I could find one. 
So if, if you did a Sunset Survivor 2, you never know. Oh, well, yeah. Could be Sunset, Sunset Survivor 2, Return of the Pirates. Hello, you that's a about great that? idea, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us today. It's been great having you here. And all the best for your book, Sunset Survivor. And I'm sure you can, um, anyone who's interested can get it online, I would imagine. Yeah, it's and, online or it's uh, in various bookstores around Hong Kong. And you've got a Facebook page and Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Sunset Survivors, yeah. Instagram's the place to go. Yeah, okay, perfect. Thank cool. you so much for having okay. me as well. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Um, Bye. We love, we love history. We love history, baby. We love, we love history. <laughs> we join J for students at CWPS. They, they would have a toy maker to make toys for the children, and then they would have a bamboo steamer maker who would make bamboo steamer for food, and there would be a tailor that makes beautiful dresses for like the Chinese traditional ones. I guess uh, you guys have been studying, most of what you've been studying would be long ago, more than 100 years. And then they would have um, a honey bucket, honey bucket collector, honey pot collector, honey pot collector, and well, they that's w- the one who collects the buckets. Of food. Yeah, and then they would, <laughs> they would be carrying them to a boat and putting them on a junk island. And I hope I don't go on that island because they might be very <laughs> <laughs> we're loving the way you, that, how you answered that question. So we were asking about what types of jobs do people do. And in one word, they were talking about poo. Poo! And we! Exactly. So, yeah, and, I'm, and I make no apologies, parents. Kids like to find out about poo. <laughs> But coming back to what you guys were saying, so the Chinese culture developed a a kind of a sewage system, but not with pipes taking away the the poo and the wee, but with people taking away the poo and the wee in buckets. Yummy poo. Changsha. So, we have heard of this name, but we don't really know much about this person. Changsha ruled the South China Seas and ruled the China <laughs> South Seas. And they had a cave, and she had a cave to keep their, their hair on diamonds and her gold. And do you think <laughs> that she was the most awesome pirate in history? Yeah! And then, when in the night comes, uh, someone watches for pirates coming, and when Changsha comes, they lock all the doors to make sure Changsha can't come in. And also, the adult men or teenage men would do like kung fu. We love history, baby! We love, we love history! Hey, we're really pleased to say that we've got a radio partner in Canada. CJSF FM 90.1 on your FM dial around Vancouver. They're playing our episodes on Tuesday mornings, the first Tuesday of every month. And if you'd like to hear us on your local radio station, wherever you are in the world, why don't you tell your local radio station about our podcast? Send them the link to our website. Hey, and why don't you tell us about your local radio station? You can email dadandmelovehistory at gmail.com. Here's a lovely email all the way from New Zealand. My six-year-old son, Leo, and I discovered your podcast a few days ago and since then have been listening to Emperor of Chin about five times. Such great information. And they go on to say, I just wanted to send a message to encourage your great work and say hello all the way from New Zealand. Hello, Leo. Hi. Hello, Michelle. Hi. If you've not yet rated and reviewed us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, please do. It helps to spread the word. It means we'll get more listeners and that means we will keep making episodes. Wait it, wait it, wait it, wait it. <laughs> Join the people. And 
And don't forget to share our podcast with your friends. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. <laughs> I, can, I, can edit, I can make that shorter later. Thanks, okay, guys. cool. Yeah, that's brilliant. No ball. Are we recording? I repeat, are we recording? Yep. Okay. I listened to your radio interview. Very good on RTS. Yeah, who knew they were going to put a video on me for the radio interview? <laughs> okay, let's go. Try not to get the sound of paper on there too much. Are they all five starred? Are oh, you are? Uh, oh, are you are? Uh, are you are? Uh, are you are? Uh, uh. Thank you. So, were you listening properly? Here's some questions for you. Why did I want to be a pirate? And number two, what would you put inside a bamboo steamer? Number three, what's the name of the job for someone who makes dresses and suits? Four, what was night soil? And five, what was a honey pot collector? Six, does James like writing? What? things do people want to take to the afterlife in China today? And finally, number eight, what's a villain hitter? <laughs> <laughs>